This is how the old boys used to do it. <laughs> this is before digital maps, right? <laughs> I got a file on all the old Sheldon, all my old favorite hunts, but do you still ever put in for that archery hunt that you and I did that one year? Every year? Yeah, that's my first choice. Have you year. ever had it again? No. Oh, no Valley, this is Southern Nevada sheep hunting. See, now Rick, what I need you to do for me is, is go through each one of these maps one at a time and log all of your notes into my Onyx. <laughs> yeah. All your waypoints and everything. Yeah. Rick Lund was the first person I hunted with when I first moved from Idaho to Nevada. He was my Nevada mule deer mentor. I can still remember unfolding brittle paper maps on the hood of his old truck, booking down dirt roads in the Sheldon, and taking our four-wheelers through some of the most nasty canyon trails that you could imagine. Rick taught me a lot about hunting deer in Nevada, and he showed me some pretty unique areas that he often liked to hunt. Anybody want to come deer hunting with me? I promise you don't. I promise. Most of what I know about hunting deer in Nevada comes from my friend Rick. Now I can add nearly 20 years of experience-based knowledge to that log. Every new year of adventure adds up to what I think I know now. So, early mornings and the evenings, I like to glass. You know, I cover a lot of country, look at big country, because the deer should be moving up and about. Even if the buck you're after is not, you don't see him, you'll see other deer, and sometimes they'll go and bump something out of his bed. But So I really don't try to pick everything apart in the mornings and the evenings, just because they're, they're more active and, and moving. But midday, when I'm glassing, that's when I'll get a lot more patient and just start cutting the the shadows apart, and the little you know bedding areas and spots where where the deer should be bedding. That's when I'll really spend a lot of time with the spotter, just just dissect into it. But for now, I'm just looking for movement and bodies and sign of life. So I just spent a couple of days up hunting and then I just decided to take a couple of days break. And then I want to kind of look at some new country that I just, I've always looked at from a distance, but I've never really gotten into it. The thing about Nevada and a lot of these areas is there is road accessibility. You're using a lot of that to your advantage. You use it to your advantage so that you can access some of this country. This, this trail through here is nice. I can get right at the top of here, this little peak where I want to be. Um, if we dump into 3D here, then we can see, you know, get a little greater detail in what we're, what we're looking at. So I can see that there's road access here, four-wheeler trails around, but, you know, a good portion of this, this mountain, there's really, there's really no trails to. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in to some of these areas. Like right here, this, this interests me. So as we're looking north here, all of this topography is on the north. And as I throw in the topo, and that gives me a better idea, even with the 3D, of, of exactly where these, these ridges lie. I really like these types of low-lying ridges that are super bald on one side. They got a lot of cover on the other. And they're facing north, northeast. You know, that to me, as the sun comes around, the sun is going to be coming around this direction this time of year. So this is going to be shaded for the longest duration of the day. So I'm gonna anticipate that if there's deer in this area that they're gonna be on, on that side. So we'll go ahead and add a waypoint here. As I zoom in, I'm kind of looking for any springs or anything to pop up. Okay, here, right here, right here. See how that happened? So if the water is there and there's a little bit of cover here, there's more cover here just north, okay. So this is a spot that, I'm, that I wanna key in on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, go through and mark some of these springs. So essentially now at this point that I've kind of located some water, I've located some cover, I've located the general area where I wanna be, 
Now I'm just gonna go in and fine tune, fine tune, find my access. I'm gonna mark those waypoints. You know, I'll mark this as bedding. I like all this stuff on the edges. You know, this is really heavy. So a lot of times in the velvet, they're not gonna be in the real heavy stuff, but all this edge green stuff, this is what I like, the sparser looking stuff. They tend to feed in a lot of that. Here's, here's a peak right here, you can see. That's right off that north side. Um, nice, easy, gentle, gentle drop. You can tell by the contour of the, the telco there. So I'm gonna mark this peak here as a potential uh, ambush point because the winds are coming out of the south, typically south, southwest. So this is what, again, what I'm talking about, about an edge here. So I can get to this point and be skirting the edge of the wind, you know, of, of my ability to get in there and win. And then in my scouting, if I can find some glassing points from a distance, then I can see if those deer are feeding out this direction, then I've got enough topography here that if I'm, if I'm at this point, my wind's going here, I can skirt down here and hopefully, hopefully ambush them if they're feeding this direction. Or vice versa, if I watch them pop out there, then I can drop off the backside of this ridge and I can come down and around and, and maybe ambush them somewhere in there. Or hopefully you put them to bed you can actually get in on them. So another little waypoint there. The last thing I'll do is, is I'll mark up my access points. So I'm gonna go in reverse. I'm gonna go with from where I wanna be. I'm gonna zoom in really tight, find those those four-wheeler trails or the hiking trails, and then follow them on out to the, to the main drag here. I don't wanna approach from the straight south because of the wind direction. So I'm gonna try to look for, you know, one of these trails that comes out here and probably just get in as far as I feel safe, and then I'm gonna hike in at first. And then once I've hunted it a couple of times or decide that that's where I wanna be, then I'll get a little more aggressive and drive in. So, you know, saves your back, saves your feet. But that's what I'm gonna do here now is just kinda of back out quite a ways. You can see the road here and here on these edges. And then I'm gonna mark those and see some access points. Like, you can see a good spot here, good access here. And that's really, that's really where I want to be, is to come in on those ridges, or just the backsides of those ridges. Good looking spot. See what we find. This is the part about hunting that I honestly think I live for. Exploration and reconnaissance. I picked this area apart off the maps and I feel like I have a good plan going into it. The terrain is bigger than I expected, but I've already started to find a few deer. What I've also found is what I didn't want to have happen. More ATV traffic than I wanted to cope with and a pair of hunting parties that have already staked claim on this big bachelor group of bucks. So I'm moving on, back to one of my old buck hides, a place that Rick showed me years ago where we've had several seasons of success. And I'm not at all disappointed about it. like to go through and look a 
with some of my notes from the past. And uh, I kind of forgot about this glassing point right here. I killed a buck here, glassed him up. There's a bunch of rock. Rock outcropping right in here along this side. What I'm going to do is work my way over to this other glassing point and glass all this rim rock. Just work my way around. Just pick this rim rock apart with my spot and scope. See what I can see. You can see I've seen, had some luck in here. There's a few bucks that have died in here. But uh, it's good to have these notes because then, then you can kind of remember you know, what, what was going on. skirting this edge, just kind of easing up, looking down at these little coolies. And I spotted the big three by three bedded under a rock up here. So I'm gonna come up here to these rocks just on the other side, ditch my stuff, ditch my pack, slip on my booties, and uh, sneak up there, see if I can get a shot. He's in a great spot, but it's well hard, so. As long as I can get a shot. The wind be a little steady. his bed right there. I was able to get a range right here. That's where I was at right there. Right. 45 yards. Small beds. I glassed all these up this morning from over here. Didn't see anything in it. They must have moved into it in their, as their second bed. Because I didn't. He wasn't there this morning. I didn't have a whole heck of a lot of footage leading up into this hunt. Just a lot of uh, scouting footage, a lot of preseason stuff. And then scouting during the hunt. But I just didn't feel like talking to the camera as much. So 
I uh, just kind of let the hunt unfold, filmed what I could film, documented everything, and uh, you know, just kind of tried to show what I was seeing without getting in the way of the hunt, you know. And I had a great time and got an awesome buck at the end of it. Made a great shot, and I'm going home happy. Those who know me know I'm a sucker for three buys. But there's my wife. Uh. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I have service. Smile, you're on camera. I'm just talking to the camera. Want me to FaceTime you? How do I FaceTime? FaceTime. We'll FaceTime them, see what they say. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, Soph. Why? Don't melt down. Soph, look. Sophia, look. Sophia. Sophia, look. Look. Oh. <laughs> I got a big buck. Oh, Sophia's having a fit. Oh no, well, this isn't a very good uh, stage time for Soph. You're on camera. What's up, Grace? Huddy, come here. I was saving this buck for Hudson. Not really. Yeah, he's awesome. Big old three by three. Bear, bear, bear. We got da, 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 da. Bear. Bear Here, I'm gonna get break in the screen. I'm gonna take a screenshot. I'm getting there. Ready? Okay, click, click. That's awesome. Who am I kidding? I always go home happy. And sometimes I even get to haul back a cooler full of meat. I really appreciate the Rick Lunds of the world. Without our mentors, the gateway into hunting could be a very difficult one. I'm heading back today, but next week I get to be the mentor. My younger brother and my son both have a pair of tags. I get to show them what I've learned on the many hunts over the years and hopefully give them the tools to pass on the tradition to continue experiencing adventures in the mountains, one dusty step at a time.